I'd like to take another moment to thank Tom, Bill, Mike, and Mona. Their leadership has been invaluable this past year, and I'm grateful to not only have your support, but also your friendship. Thank you. Let's give them another round. And I should say the same, uh, to go off script for a second, of Zach Silverstein. Somewhere in this room is solving five complex problems at once while eating his salad. So thank you, Zach. There he is. Walking into this room filled with so much dedication, determination, clear-eyed hope, it feels like the best kind of family reunion. This is a remarkable community. And day by day, even in these challenged times, we are repairing and together improving the world. In particular, I'd like to welcome Agnes Cullimore, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial, Summary, or Arbitrary Executions. In June, she released an authoritative report showing that the Saudi monarchy was responsible for the murder of dissident Jamal Khashoggi. And in so doing, she rightfully criticized the United States for not doing enough to hold the killers accountable. She exemplifies the best of the human rights movement in speaking truth to power. She has her thanks. <laughs> human Rights First has a remarkable track record when it comes to shaping government policy. Over four decades, from the Refugee Act to stopping CIA torture, we've spearheaded profound changes that have relieved suffering and expanded respect for human rights and human dignity. But we have never waited for the government to act. In the 90s, for example, Human Rights First helped create WITNESS, which provides citizens with technology to expose human rights abusers and seek justice. We brought corporations and human rights advocates together in the Fair Labor Association to protect the rights of workers and fight modern day slavery. And today, whether by going to court to secure the rights of refugees, or mobilizing veterans to combat Islamophobia, or compiling the evidence on human rights abusers who should be sanctioned, we don't sit back and hope that the better angels of our elected leaders will prevail. We forge alternative paths toward real progress. Such initiative is essential today. At a time when authoritarianism and extremism are on the rise, when technology is giving citizens more power than ever to act for good or for ill, and climate change threatens to make this refugee crisis perpetual, we need new ways of thinking, new ways of acting, and new ways of empowering citizens, empowering each of us to fight for human rights. Don't get me wrong, the US government remains one of the greatest potential forces for progress in the world. We're continuing to persuade and press and pressure government officials to do the right thing. Just in the last year, we quashed an effort in Congress to curb the right to asylum, secured essential funding for legal representation of asylum seekers. We also secured sanctions on perpetrators of human rights crimes around the world via the Global Magnitsky Act, we helped lead the fight to finally bring justice to the killers of Jamal Khashoggi. And we worked with the Pentagon on a comprehensive policy to reduce civilian casualties. This advocacy matters. But at the same time, we're taking matters into our own hands. Let me put it this way. We press the government to protect human rights when it's possible. And we fight to protect human rights despite our government when it's necessary. That means <laughs> mastering technology in the service of human rights. It means confronting extremism more directly, from anti-Semitism to anti-Muslim bigotry to white nationalism. It means empowering civil society to hold human rights abusers accountable. And it means using every means at our disposal, the courts, technology, cultural and commercial institutions, solidarity among and within communities to champion true American ideals. There's a tendency to see our current predicament as a passing crisis, but our challenges transcend the current moment. And whatever happens in the fall of 2020, this fight will continue. We need you with us. 
because the stakes could not be higher. Like generations before us, we're in a contest for the soul of our country. And a favorable outcome is not assured. The arc of history will only bend toward justice if we find ourselves the strength to bend it with our own hands. History shows us that respect for human rights triumphs over forces of regression and repression only when citizens and activists and advocates exercise their agency and realize their power. So I invite you tonight to really feel the power in this room, in yourselves, and especially in all of us together. Human Rights First remains committed to this fight and committed to this work, but we cannot do it without you.